Paddy Upton is a highly successful fitness and mental conditioning coach, having had stints with the Pro Tiers, the Indian cricket team, and helping business teams take their game to new heights. Paddy joins us in studio this morning to give us his version of the secret to success and the art of leadership. Paddy, thank you very much for coming this morning. It's a pleasure to have you in our studio. And I'm sure cricket fans know very well who you are and, and, and what you've achieved. Um, you do have quite a CV, so before we start, do you mind, is there a chance you can kind of summarize uh, what you've done over the years, how you got uh, into being a, well, now renowned as a, a mental toughness, mental conditioning coach for cricket teams? I guess, yeah, morning, and yeah, thanks very much for having me here. I guess it's just a mixture of things that I've sort of brought to, together to um, make up the work that I do. You know, it's a combination of four university degrees. Mm. Um, fitness training is where I really started out with the South African cricket team, changed over into um, the, the mental side of the game. Mm. And ultimately, the mental side of the game is really influenced by the leadership. So it's just sort of a nice synergy of uh, leadership philosophy, uh, sports or high performance philosophy, education, psychology, where it all sort of comes together. And ultimately, I guess what I really thoroughly enjoyed doing is creating great environments for people to flourish, people to grow, that bring the best out in people, particularly in high performance environments. Mm -hmm. uh, leadership then, you, you obviously mentioned being, uh, there's been a, a, a sort of paradigm shift in that regard. Tell us a bit more about that and what you've, how you've seen that uh, the changes sort of in practice yeah. in, in some of the teams yeah. you've coached. Well, if we, one were to look at just sort of the leadership landscape in general, sport business across the board is, maybe 20, 30 years ago, the person who became the CEO of a company or the coach of a, of a team got to that position because they knew more than anybody else about what needed to be done. They were the expert. And in that model, the expert or the content expert would then lead by telling people what to do. And people were following them were happy to receive instruction from somebody who knew better. And that was really the 200 years of industrial era. We had that leader as content expert mm -hmm. primarily leading through a process of instruction. But then into sort of early 2000s with the advent of the internet coming in, that information or knowledge that went from within a, the content expert's head went onto the internet and widely distributed and became av available to everybody. Mm. So no longer is the leader the expert and leading by telling people what to do by instruction really doesn't work in now the knowledge era where it worked in the industrial era. So we're, needing, we're seeing more and more coaches, bosses in companies facilitating expertise landing on the table, collaborating, uh, creating environment that brings the best out in people rather than the content expert trying to put into people and direct people and instruct people what to do. Um, and the reality is a lot of business leaders haven't navigated that shift. We know research from, you know, through the top mm. HR companies the world suggest today between 74 and 84 percent of people want to leave their jobs. And when asked why, the main reason is because of my boss. Mm. And I would hazard a guess that there's a possibility that if we were to ask athletes, three out of four of them might actually rather want to play for another team because they don't like the way they're being led. And generally, it's almost always because of the instruction-based command and control, my way or the highway, top-down authoritarian leadership that worked 20 years ago is no longer valid. It's pretty redundant. Mm. Now, if you look at that from a from a, a coaching perspective and then from a captaincy perspective, so we obviously are also seeing um, more examples of like co-captaincy in sports teams. I mean, the pro tiers, which we'll talk about a bit later, you know, we've got two very strong leaders in that side. Or well, I mean, there's probably even more, you know, when you look at yeah. the sort of experience and the senior yeah. players. And how do you get that balance between um, sort of collective teamwork and then these sort of strong characters that might have the potential to kind of go rogue? Well, I think for me, the key difference is in someone's ego or their attachment to their own ideas or their attachment to power. Now, in order to lead collaboratively to get the best person or the best thinking to emerge on the table in an environment, for example, where you've got an A.B. de Villiers, a Faf Duplessis, and at, at a point in time also Hashim Amla, plus you've got a coach, in order for them to work really well together and get the best thinking out of the group, they would need to supersede ego. Um, and the big obstacle to collaborating, to facilitating, is somebody who is attached to their ideas, attached to their thinking, um, and you know, it's, it's literally is coming to a situation where we're going to do it my way because I know best. That's the obstacle to 
get harnessing the collective intelligence or collaborating or getting the best out of the group.